Have you ever thought about what made the Mitsubishi A6M0 one of the most famous what 2 aircraft? From its introduction in 1940, Japan's Mitsubishi A6M0 rapidly became a symbol of the nation's air superiority in the Pacific, striking fear into the hearts of its adversaries. The Zero, a product of Mitsubishi's innovative design and engineering, was an aircraft of many firsts. It was the first carrier-based fighter capable of besting its land-based opponents. This was largely due to its superior long-range and exceptional maneuverability, attributes that were unheard of at the time for a single-engined fighter. As a marvel of Japanese ingenuity, the Zero boasted an impressive range of over 2,000 miles, far outstretching its American counterparts. This extended reach allowed Japanese forces to strike at targets far beyond the reach of other fighters, granting them unprecedented control over the vast expanse of the Pacific. But it wasn't just range that set the Zero apart. Its maneuverability was second to none. The aircraft's lightweight design and powerful engine made it an agile predator in the skies, able to outmaneuver almost any adversary. This agility, coupled with its potent armament, made the Zero a formidable foe in aerial combat. This dominance was never more apparent than in the infamous attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941. The Zero played a pivotal role in this surprise offensive, its long range and maneuverability proving instrumental in the devastating blow dealt to the United States Pacific Fleet. It was this attack that truly demonstrated the Zero's capabilities, earning it a place in history as one of the most feared and respected aircraft of the Second World War. The Mitsubishi A6M0, a symbol of Japan's early dominance in the Pacific, was a force to be reckoned with in the skies of Watu. Its introduction marked a turning point in aerial warfare, redefining what was possible for a single-engine fighter and setting a new benchmark for all that would follow. Ever wondered how the Boeing B-29 Superfortress changed the course of the war? Let's dive into the story of this remarkable aircraft. In the year 1944, a new player entered the arena of World War II, the Boeing B-29 Superfortress. It was a product of American ingenuity, a machine that dwarfed all others in its class. The B-29 was a marvel of its time, its most distinguishing feature was its pressurized cabins. This was a breakthrough in aviation technology, allowing the crew to operate at high altitudes, far beyond the reach of enemy fire. It was like a fortress in the sky, hence the name Superfortress, but the innovation didn't stop there. The B-29 was also equipped with remote-controlled guns. This meant the crew could operate the guns from a safe distance, reducing their exposure to enemy fire. The B-29 was not just an aircraft, it was a technological titan altering the dynamics of aerial warfare. Now, let's talk about its role in the war. The Boeing B-29 Super Fortress was the heavy lifter of the U.S. Air Force. It carried out the strategic bombing of Japan, devastating the enemy's industrial capabilities and crippling their war effort. It flew mission after mission, dropping tons of bombs over Japan's cities and leaving destruction in its wake. But the B-29's most significant and controversial contribution to the war was the dropping of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These two events marked the end of World War II, and they were carried out by B-29 SE, the Enola Gay and Boxcar. It was a moment that changed the world, a moment that underscored the lethal power of this aircraft. The Boeing B-29 Superfortress, a testament to American technological prowess, undeniably shifted the tide of the war. Its advanced technology and strategic role in the war marked a turning point, a game-changer, in the history of military aviation, what made the de Havilland DH-98 Mosquito, known as the Wooden Wonder, so remarkable? Unveiled in the year 1941 by the United Kingdom, the de Havilland DH-98 Mosquito was a game-changer in its own right. What set this aircraft apart was its unique all-wood construction. In a time when metals were the go-to materials for aircraft design, the engineers at de Havilland decided to go against the grain, quite literally. Constructed primarily from plywood and balsa, materials easily available and non-strategic, this aircraft was a triumph of ingenuity over scarcity. But don't be fooled by its seemingly fragile construction. The wooden wonder was anything but delicate. The Mosquito was a marvel of versatility. It served as a fighter bomber and even a photo reconnaissance aircraft. As a fighter it could hold its own against the best of what the enemy had to offer. As a bomber it could carry a substantial payload and deliver it with precision. 
but it was perhaps in its role as a photo reconnaissance aircraft that the Mosquito truly shone. Its speed and altitude capabilities made it virtually untouchable, allowing it to gather invaluable intelligence over enemy territory. The Mosquito took part in a variety of operations throughout the war. Its most famous missions include the precision bombing of the Oslo and Aarhus Gestapo headquarters, saving countless lives. Despite its unconventional build, the Wooden Wonder proved to be a formidable aircraft. Its speed, agility, and versatility made it a favorite among pilots. Its wooden construction allowed for easier repairs and modifications, ensuring that the Mosquito could adapt to the ever-changing demands of war. The de Havilland DH-98 Mosquito was a testament to the power of innovation and adaptability. It challenged the norms of aircraft design and proved that sometimes thinking outside the metal box can lead to extraordinary results. The de Havilland DH-98 Mosquito, with its innovative design and versatility, left an indelible mark on Wahoo Aviation. How did the Focke Wolf FW-190 and the Dewoitine D-520 contribute to their country's defense efforts during WAN-2? This brings us to the fourth chapter of our journey through the most famous aircraft of the Second World War. Let's begin with Germany's Focke Wolf FW-190. Introduced in 1941, the FW-190 quickly became a force to be reckoned with. Its powerful BMW 801 radial engine, combined with a wide array of weaponry, made it a formidable adversary. This aircraft was no mere tool of war, it was a masterstroke of engineering, a testament to German ingenuity. The FW-190 was not just a fighter, it was a defender, tasked with protecting the homeland from enemy bombers. Its power and versatility were unmatched, allowing it to engage in dogfights, intercept bombers, and even carry out ground attacks. The FW-190 was a true game-changer, shifting the balance of air power over Europe in Germany's favor. Now, let's cross the border into France, where in 1940 the Duoitine D-520 made its debut. The D-520 was France's answer to Germany's air superiority. This aircraft was not as powerful as its German counterpart, but what it lacked in brute force it made up for in agility. The D-520 was nimble, quick and capable of outmaneuvering most of its adversaries. It was the embodiment of the French spirit, resilient and unyielding. The D-520 served as a defensive fighter, tasked with protecting France from the onslaught of German bombers. Despite the odds, this gallant aircraft held its own, proving that courage and determination could triumph over raw power. The Focke Wolf FW-190 and the Dewoitine D-520 played pivotal roles in the air battles of Webby B-2. They were not just machines of war, they were symbols of national pride and resilience. They defended their homelands with courage and determination, proving that in the face of adversity the spirit of a nation could never be defeated. The Focke Wolf FW-190 and the Dewoitine D-520, both stalwarts of their nation's defense efforts, were key players in the air battles of Duarte II.